Mentorship can come in many shapes and sizes. What works for someone might not be what works for another person. Today, we'll look at the many faces of mentorship. This episode of Design Today is brought to you by me. Design Today is more than just a podcast. We are building a community of hungry UX designers. Want to join that community? Head over to designtoday.com and sign up to receive a Slack channel invite. Do you really want to show your love and support for the show? Then consider becoming a patron. As you know, this work is a labor of love and any donation not only means a ton, but goes a long way in fueling the engine. Visit designtoday.com to learn more about our community and resources. Now back to the show. All right, everyone, welcome back to Design Today. I'm your host, Dylan Winspear. And on this episode, we have the talented and forever entertaining Patrick Cox. Many of you will locally know Patrick from his involvement with the UX community. Others might know him from his podcast, which he co-hosts called Designed Much. Patrick's a UX director at a company here called Canopy. With his years of experience, he's had quite a bit of involvement uh, with what we're going to call mentorship. That mentorship can come in many different shapes and sizes. How can you find a good mentor that meets your needs? How can you become a better mentor for those who need it? Let's dive into it and find some of those answers. Okay, man. Very good. Mr. Patrick. I'm here. You are here. <laughs> Thanks for joining <laughs> me on the show, man. I appreciate this. This is awesome being in the, in the studio. The studio. We call it that? I don't know. I mean, this is this is where it happens. This is what you see. This is this is this is the corner that you see when you're here. I, you know what's funny is what the cameras don't see is this wall. Yeah. And I was considering taking that soundproofing and putting it all over, but then I was going, this is like my personality this, wall. Well, yeah, this deflects it too. Yeah. Man. Well, a little. I mean, bit. I mean, Not it as doesn't well absorb as that it does. as that. Yeah, yeah. But, no, this, but this, is, this is good. This is the show wall. Yeah. Anyways. You got the Windspear Cruisers on the wall. Yeah. It's that's pretty good. That's a podcast for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some boards that my brother and I made. Uh, there's some fun stuff in there. Anywho, that's not what we're here to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> but I do appreciate you, you coming here and chatting. Uh, I think it's safe to tell everyone that you and I really hooked up and met for the first time last week. And, yeah, in uh, real life. IRL. In real life. Uh, I've known your name for a long time, though. I've seen... Uh, some things that you've been doing, uh, following some of the, uh, I guess, your your leadership that you've had at Canopy. You serve as director of product there. Mm-hmm. Um, I followed along the podcast, Design Much. <laughs> uh, you know, so I've seen your name around. You're involved yeah. in the community. You're out there. So uh, Patrick Cox is a name that I think a lot of people here locally are going to be familiar with. And the more people get involved in podcasts, they'll probably come across your podcast as well. So I hope so. That's the hope, right? I hope so, man. I hope, I hope people bump into this one, then they go to ours, right? Well, that's that's, that's the, game, the plug, right? and I'm I'm full of game with <laughs> with those shameless plugs. Uh, but it's 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 dope that you're here, and it's dope that we were able to connect last week. It was after our conversation last week that we were having that I go, you know, what's probably a real natural fit to have you come on the show and uh, jump into a topic with me. But before we get to that, uh, why don't you give those who are listening a little bit of background who maybe haven't heard of your name before and tell us how you got to where you're at today and. Uh, what makes Patrick the man? Oh yeah, uh, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> no, um, yeah, I'm so I'm the I'm the product design director at Canopy right now. Uh, so I started teaching again at Dev Mountain, taught there a long time ago, and some of the people that work with us over at Canopy, I taught. That's cool. A long time ago, so they're really good people. Um, have them in. Um, yeah, I started uh, like ten years ago, I think. I started a little company called Moki. They, oh, really? gave, me, they gave me a shot. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing, so I faked it. And yeah. I think they knew. I think they knew I was fake. <laughs> but uh, I faked it and like learned learn on the job. We were doing mobile apps. We were doing all kinds of stuff at the time. Um, I remember. I remember the antidote for Moki for me was always that was when the iPad came out, uh-huh. and it was like this weird. We had apps right in the store, and then the iPad came out. And we didn't know how. We didn't know how it was going to work and we didn't know how to like redo our applications and how the design was going to work on any of those. And so it kind of came out and hit and and everybody was like, this is, this is ridiculous. The (laughs) iPad, I was going to buy this thing. And then, uh, yeah, like three months later, people are taking pictures of Disneyland with their iPads and they just kept rocking on it. It just took off. Um, 
Yeah, and then from you know Moki, I bounced around a little bit, tried to figure out what I want to do, and then kind of landed it in structure. I was there uh-huh. for a while. Uh, <laughs> I went there, then I quit, then I came back. Did you really? Um, yeah. What did you do in between? Uh, I I took a I took a I took a hiatus. Let's, let's say I took a hiatus. Uh, <laughs> I, I went I went on I don't another know how hard I to push here. <laughs> little adventure. No, I went over to uh, I went over to Vivint for a couple of months. Okay, and then came back. Do you some door to door sales. Yeah, I went to do, no, door, wear the flat room no, hat, you did the whole thing. <laughs> Not even no. buying it. <laughs> uh, no, went over there and helped on their uh, their their sales app sure. for the door to door for the door to door guys. Cool. Um, and then yeah, that went about two and a half months, so not very long. And then went back to Instructure. Were you itching so. to get back to Instructure, or uh, why did you go back? Kind of. I, well, I missed Instructure. Did you? It was like it was like uh, I wasn't home really at Vivint. Sure. Right. It was like I missed I missed the culture and structure. I really liked the culture and the structure and the people that I worked with yeah. there. And so I think I more missed that. The day that I left, so we used to go over this place. It was you know those uh, I don't know if you've been up to Instructure in Cottonwood Heights, but in the building next door to it, they've got this little place called Knickerbockers. Okay. And they make the best breakfast burritos of all time. That's what brought you back to Instructure. And uh, it was that. <laughs> on my first day on my first day at Vivint, I get a picture on my phone from my buddies over at Instructure with them this hanging out missing. eating breakfast burritos. Like, you're not gonna have this anymore. And That's I was like, funny. All right, I'll come back. That's enough. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So and then uh yeah, oh, I already mentioned it. I was—I was gonna say right now. I'm just, I just spun back up at Dev Mountain teaching the night class, the night cohort. When did you start doing that again? Uh, about a month ago. Oh, did you really? Yeah, yeah. Because we're just right upstairs from Dev Mountain now. Yeah. Canopy's just right upstairs. So, right. Um, and I know Sonny and some other people down there and yep. Joff. Um, so I was like, well, I, I really enjoyed teaching. So I haven't been I haven't done it for a little while. I taught yeah. at UVU for one semester. Uh, but then, yeah, I also I taught at Dev Mountain a long time ago when we first started the UX program. And uh, so I wanted to get back into it. And I was like, well, it's just downstairs. Like, And then we have one of our designers, uh, one of our employees who's kind of becoming a designer. She mm-hmm. wants to be a designer. And uh, she started her cohort. And I was like, I'll come down and teach. So I thought that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. And I work with Nick Bluth. Yep. He's on our team. And he teaches there, too. So I was like, well, he just bought a new Tesla. So you know what? So maybe I'll get a new (laughs) Tesla, but no, alas, no. You know what's funny is I have not met Nick, but his name's been dropped on the podcast now twice, and so I might need to meet him. It's because he's paying everybody to like bring up his name. He's doing some personal branding. Yeah, he's listening to this right now. He's buying it off. It's working. He's like, this is this is good. This is good. (laughs) That's funny. So with all your teaching background, it seems like a pretty natural conversation for us to talk about mentors, and not necessarily. looking for mentors or anything like that but sitting on the other side of the table if you are a mentor it seems like you've been in that situation now for a while a little bit i would i hope and i'm hoping i'm helping people out sure um yeah but i think i think i've always so when i was at it, it kind of goes for me it kind of goes back to moki a little bit because when i was there i didn't know i was the only designer yeah. i was brand new i was just yeah. getting out of college um, and I didn't know what I was doing. Right. And we were working on mobile stuff. So at mm-hmm. the time the mobile stuff, nobody was really, nobody had really done it yet. You know, everything was just kind of coming out. Um, you know, no iPad, nothing. And so there wasn't really a lot of resources yeah. available for mobile. Like this yeah. is pre mobile first book and all that stuff, yep. you know? So like there wasn't any real resources. So, and I didn't have anybody locally that I knew cause I was new kind of to the community, the design community around. And here. how many years ago was this? This is about, this is like 2009, 2008, 2009. So the community would have been really small anyways. Yeah. And I, I'd gone to a couple of user groups. Like I went to like a flash user group. Uh-huh. Uh, that was huge at the time. Yeah. <laughs> As it was dying. Um, went to the flash user group, went to a couple other user groups. That's where I kind of stumbled on the IXDA group um, at the time here, the like the local chapter here. And I kind of went to that, but it was really small and it was pretty high level stuff. And so I started reaching out to just everybody on Twitter and mm-hmm. whatever I could find anybody who'd mm-hmm. done anything. And um, I found a, I found a handful of people uh, not here, but um, that would that would actually like reply to my DMs yeah. on Twitter and give me some advice. And I'd shoot them like designs, and I'd get like some pretty decent advice on designs like that. That's horrible. Don't do that or whatever. <laughs> And they'd send me design resources from time to time. And then I started, um, yeah, and then from there, I kind of just picked up a few people. But I've always tried to find a handful of people, like in my career since I started, that were sort of the level above you, you know, or in the level that you're at, right? Because I was kind of thrown into design 
with nobody that I was working with. Yep. And so I had to reach out and find some people. And then every place I went, like when I went to Instructure, I found people that were kind of on the same, like I've always felt like I was drowning, drown, drowning a little bit. Um, so you reach out to people that are kind of like have been doing that a little bit more and then just yeah. start talking to them and yeah. get to know them. And some people want to help you and some people don't. So have you really found people that don't want to help? Yeah. I found people that just, just dismiss you or ignore really? you. Yeah, for sure. And maybe it's just me, but, uh, <laughs> no, like you'll ask them questions. They're like, I don't know. You know, and they sure. kind of just dismiss you sure. or it's like, I don't have enough time. Um, so nothing like formal, yeah. nothing like, I mean, we kind of talked about this too. Like there wasn't really any formal mentoring that where it was like, Hey, do you want to be my mentor and I'll be your protege or right. whatever? Nothing like that. Right. It was more just like, I start reaching out to somebody and they reply back and then, it, and then slowly over time you kind of build a relationship of kind of trust. Do you have a mentor that you go back to pretty frequently at this point? Um, I have a handful, Yeah. uh, kind of all over. I, I have, I have, uh, I have people that I look up to, you know, that, that I think are like either on a way higher level than I would ever, you know, attain to be, yeah. um, or former managers that I reach out to a lot. Um, some of them probably don't know that I abuse them as a mentor. Sure. Um, do you think so, they don't feel abused? I'm not, you're nah. not, no, they don't. There, I, might be, there might be a few, no, they don't feel abused. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say, cause that's <laughs> probably like the beauty in the relationship is the fact that it's just natural. You can check in, you can, you know, pop yeah. in when you need to and. Uh, no, feel no pressure that you got to maintain something outside yeah. of that, right? Well, and it might be, it might be like a long time too before I talk to some, but some of right. these people sometimes, you know, some of them are regular things and they're friends and stuff. Yeah. And then um, other people, you know, I might just check in with them every once in a while, yeah. go grab breakfast with them or something every year or something yeah. like that. Um, or even when, you know, I have a question, mm-hmm. I shoot, you know, shoot them, mm-hmm. a, shoot them a text or whatever. And they're like, oh yeah, I haven't heard from you in a while. Right. So. Yeah. No, I think there's a lot of value in having a mentor. I, I, I prior to Domo, I was at three different startups and I, I've said this a couple of times and this is of no credit to myself, but at those startups, I was always the most experienced designer in the room. And this is talking about <laughs> when I have a year of experience. Yeah. And so it's not like a credit to myself, but I had nobody who I could look to for a design as a design mentor, just cause that's the, that was the space of our startup. There just wasn't anyone of experience mm-hmm. there. And after that third one closed down, I thought, you know what, I'd like to go to somewhere where I could trust that there's going to be more experienced designers. And uh, when I landed at Domo, I found myself with more experienced designers and people with, uh, you know, just a lot of different skills that I'd never even seen applied to UX before. So it is eye opening. What do you find to be the value in having a strong UX mentor? Um, The value for me is when you get into those situations where you don't know how to react or because I mean, d- design is just, you know, it's decision making, right? right? You gotta, you gotta be able to make a decision. And I think a mentor is one of those people who has, uh, hopefully they have a background in making decisions, mm-hmm. hopefully has seen the same problems you're experiencing. And a lot of times if you're in doing B2B apps, you do the same type of stuff over right. and over again. Right. So they've probably even seen the same exact design that you're working on or something like that. So the value in having a mentor is being able to help you kind of have closure on a decision you're making. Like in, in the past, it's always been, uh, for me, from a design standpoint, it's always been like, oh, I'm working on this thing. Um, I have this idea, but I'm not sure. Or I, you know, I don't know how to handle this like situation with people in the office. Um, I have this idea, but I'm still a little nervous to execute on that. So then it's like, well, I'll hit them up and see what they would do. And mm-hmm. then it, it's either, it either reassures you that you're making the right decision or re or, or tells you you're, you're completely off. Sure. You know, like you're going out. The, the other thing too, like from, from, uh, from any other standpoint of having a mentor, I think it's good to have them because they get to know you and they probably have networks. So like if you're looking for a job or something like that, it's always good to have some, yeah. some mentors that can help you. Cause usually those people kind of, hopefully care about you yeah, on yeah. some level. And they're like, when you hit them up, you're like, Hey, I'm not, I, I lost my job. You know, like do you, you know, you hit them up and you say, Hey, do you know any companies that I could, that I could talk to or anything like that? They're usually like, they'll, they'll put out a good word for you if they've, if they've worked with you in the past and kind of know your process a little bit. So I think that's also good, but that's more of a long, like a, a like a long game, like a sure. long term type thing. Um, yeah, I would just say having, having a mentor has always helped me, kind of help me with my decision-making process. Sure. Like being able to close those things off. Yeah, it makes sense. 
You know, it's interesting because we've got a lot of new UX, new UX designers hitting the field. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities for them to turn around and begin mentoring the next wave of UX designers. Uh, one of the things that I'm not sure exactly what side of the fence I sit on quite yet, uh, and I don't want this to come off as controversial in any sense, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about new UX designers finding a mentor and somebody who's only got six months more experience than them. You know, yeah. like you kind of brought up the value in like having a mentor and then also kind of building your network. And I kind of see it more as like, okay, you're building your UX network, but I don't know if that's really a mentor yet. I mean, they don't have a whole lot more yeah. experience than you do. So maybe it's a soundboard, but I don't know if I would clear, I, would, I don't know if I would categorize that as a mentor. Yeah. I don't know either. I think, I think in, I think it's nice to know, it's nice to have a network of people who are either in the same situation yes. as you are. And I would, I would definitely recommend everybody have that where they can bounce ideas outside of exactly. your company. Exactly. 100%. Um, where you can bounce off of ideas. I think you should find somebody though that's done this before. Yeah. And I think that's where the mentor thing comes in. And maybe it's, maybe it's so like design is tough because you know, somebody has been doing it a year versus somebody, you know, I've heard, I've heard the argument like, Oh, that person's only been doing it three years. They're not a senior designer. What, what the hell's going on with them? You know, mm -hmm. and it's like, well, depending on what they worked on and where they came from and their life experience prior to their UX design career, um, they might be a senior designer. Yeah. Right. And so like they might have the skills or the talent or the whatever to, to be in that role. And I think that's okay. So I think the time frame is a little bit weird, but if you can find people that just have the experience level that you, yeah. that you are trying to get, it's a good way of saying it. I think if you look at that and you say, okay, well, if I'm, if I'm a mid-level designer, I've been doing this a year and a half, two years. Uh, that person over there has been doing it five years at a company that's similar to me. Maybe they're not a senior designer, but th they've obviously been through this. They've before. gone through this rodeo before. Yeah. And I would, I would, I, I personally like to find out those people, yeah. the people that I know have done this type of thing before. Yeah. Um, the, and especially the things that you're shooting for. Like, don't find somebody who's doing... I, I think it's good to have inspirational type people to follow. But as a mentor, I think it's better to find somebody that is doing what you want to do in, say, a year or two years. Um, I think that's always good. And if you can see that they're doing it now, then they can add that value to you. I agree with you, though. Like, uh, sometimes... Well, like at Dev Mountain, I always get, and maybe this, maybe this is bad, <laughs> but like at Dev Mountain, they have their mentors that have come from the previous cohorts right. that are that are teaching the the students that are in the current cohort. Right. And I, I don't, I'm always like on the fence with that because most of them don't have any practical experience. Yeah. And sometimes you, you know, you're taught one thing, and then you go practically, you go do it out in the field, and then you're like, that's not at all what it they talked stick. about, right? Yeah. And that happens at any, like that happened when I was in college. Sure. The stuff they taught me in college, I got my first job, I was like, oh, that's not that's not how it works. So I've always had a problem with that a little bit is they're kind of, go, they're kind of relying off the curriculum more than the experience. Yeah. Than the experience. Yeah. And I think it's more valuable for those students to have somebody in that classroom and, that has at least been doing it a year. No, and I agree. And this is not to knock any of those people who are doing just yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because I do believe you're a kind soul. Thanks for turning around and paying <laughs> it forward to the next wave. Like I do 100% appreciate that. And uh, the people who are on the receiving end of that are appreciating it as well. Mm -hmm. I just think there is different value to be gained when you could find somebody who's got more experience, you know, and I'm not going to clarify that experience yeah. as, as years. Cause I think you're right. Somebody with three years versus five years. I don't know. I mean, it's a, what are they learning? I guess is, yeah. is is the big piece there. But I think there's value to be set to be found in finding somebody who's just got more experience, uh, who's just looked at a problem from different angles, and not just like visual problems or user experience problems, but also like workplace problems mm -hmm. or collaboration problems or that, that kind of stuff. So there's value in finding finding somebody who's kind of gone through the ropes, so yeah. just kind of you know cut their teeth already on this stuff. Well, I think too, like you brought up the, I think those soft skills too are the stuff that um is the harder things to learn mm. and so i always i always tell like the designers at canopy i always tell them to find a mentor it sounds weird like find a mentor outside of canopy yeah like we have mentors here that people that can help you too but 
try to find somebody outside of Canopy that can give you a different perspective. Yeah. Because what we do at Canopy is different than what you do over at another company. Right. And so, um, and that experience will only there. be good for them, right? And it'll yeah. be good for Canopy if they if they know if they've got that experience. Yeah. Bring it in. Exactly. Bring it in. If it's good, <laughs> it'll help us. So let's focus a little bit then on being that mentor because we do have a lot of people who are wanting to get more into that mentorship position. They want mm-hmm. to start helping the next wave, whether they're mid level, senior level, or director, VP. I mean, it, it could be at any stage. What advice do you have for those people who now have the opportunity to help the next wave? Yeah, I would say the first thing I would say is be open to it. Like I said, there's been people that have kind of not not necessarily denied me, but haven't really been helpful. How does that come off? Um, like they just don't respond to you? They, they ghost just, you? Or yeah, what? just ghost me or, uh, or yeah, just give me weird things or like, here's an article I read, mm-hmm. you know, like that. I can read that article too. Like, and in fact, I probably already read that article, which led me to you somehow. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so like, uh, actually, be generous with your with your time yeah. that you give to other people. Um, if you're interested in it, it does take time. I yeah. think, um, especially if you've got a couple of people you're kind of working with or people that are reaching out to you. I think it does take time. Like, you you should go sit down with them, have lunch with them, get to know them, um, probably invest in them just in general as people mm-hmm. a little bit. And then just be generous with your time that you give them because they're, they're going to appreciate it. They're going to need it. Sure. Um, and then that, that relationship is just more long lasting anyway. And you never know, like in the future, like that's happened to me, people that I've helped out, um, you know, we've hired a canopy, right? I've reached out to them and brought them back in. Like mm. I said, I know you, you know? So if you're looking at it, if you're like a senior designer and your goal in the future might be to build your own team someday or start your own company where you're going to need designers or, you know, I don't know, start an agency or something. I think it's good to invest in those people, even if it's like, you know, lunches and stuff like that. Uh, but invest in that time because those people could turn out to be your future. Oh people yeah. You're going to hire and bring yep. on your team. So, um, yeah, I would say the, the, the biggest thing is just be open to it when people, it's not like, uh, it's not like, it's not like, I don't think people reach out to you and say, Hey, will you be my mentor? But I think they they ask you questions, mm-hmm. right? And I think you need to be receptive to that and and be like, oh, this this person's asking me questions. Yep. Um, like I'm gonna give them some actual time, right? And start talking to them about these, uh, about their issues and their like, and be more practical with it. Yep. And not just dismiss it and say, well, this medium article that I read the other day was really sweet. Yeah. Um, but because I think yeah, I think that's usually how it happens is you just kind of get dismissed. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, that's great. Here you go. Check Do this, this out. Yeah, here's a resource. And a lot of times if you're not working at the same company, it's you don't feel like there's an obligation to. Sure. Um, but uh, Never see that then, guy again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think sometimes personalities don't work out, and that's fine, too. Yeah. Uh, but, but let that happen naturally, right? Like, yeah. if you don't click with somebody, you don't click with someone. Let that happen naturally. Don't, you know, set it up to fail by just ghosting yeah. from, the, from the start. Yeah. You know, something else that I think is funny is that uh, – you know, you, you talked about the fact that, you know, you, you don't want to burn bridges necessarily with somebody down the road, right? Just because you don't know them right now or you haven't had a t- tight relationship right now doesn't mean you won't in the future. You never know how they could end up on your team. Yeah. And I think of that all the time when we're going through like our hiring process at Domo or, you know, when we're at meetups where, you know, and you're meeting other people, you're networking and stuff. The UX community here in Utah is actually fairly good size, right? I mean, there's mm-hmm. a lot of UX designers in this community. But as, as large as it is, it's still real small. Yeah. And I always think to myself, like, don't burn a bridge now because you never know when they might be hiring you in the future. <laughs> or you never know when you might be partnered with them on your next project in the future. And so I've always ended, like, my, you know, rejection emails with, like, sorry, it didn't work out now. It's a small community, but maybe we'll mm-hmm. cross paths in the future. Yeah. And uh, because I do think you you want to leave that door open. You, you want to have the opportunity to, uh, to build a relationship in the future, even if the timing's not right right now. Yeah, no, that's true. I think I've burned a few bridges too. In the <laughs> and, but you can repair those bridges. I, I hope. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. If you're listening to this right now and your bridge has been burnt by Patrick in the past, he wants to repair it. Reach, I want to reach out. Let's go to lunch sometime. Reach out to him and he it. will not ghost yeah. you starting today. <laughs> <laughs> I've committed him to it. Um, What do you think, though, about like UX designers? Okay, you're going through the process. You're learning a lot. Do you feel like you need to be documenting your learnings in order to be a good mentor in the future? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think I've ever really documented much of anything 
that I've gone through, at least in, not in any formal way. Sure. Um, you know, like I'll be going through some old, old work and I'll yeah. see stuff and be like, Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. Learn that from that person. That's awesome. Um, I don't, I haven't really documented anything. I think, uh, I don't know. I, it would be really cool actually to do that. To document? Yes. Okay. So let me, I might call <laughs> But as your, a designer. <laughs> I'm going to call your bluff a little bit though, because I've listened to design much and you've got stories that you've shared on there. So yeah. Maybe if you haven't like written it down, it still has been logged away. They're, they're here. They're in the vault somewhere. Yeah, they are probably. logged away because it's not like you're just pulling stuff straight out of your ear, you know, when yeah. you're having your own podcast. So I do, but I think there's an importance in documenting what you're learning so that you can continue to be building upon it. And even having podcasts like this helps you document the learning. So, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. So I don't know if that's really calling your bluff, but I think you, <laughs> you probably got more than you're letting on to right now. Well, and I think, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a UX designer. So like storytelling and, and, and being involved in stories is important to me. Right. right? And I, I remember, or I, you, you like, even when you have a bad experience, that's something that's, that's something that's in here. Right. right. And you learn from it and you grow from it. So I think, I think, yeah, just having experiences with people like that. I think I remember those more than like, uh, you know, people asking you questions on Slack. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like, if you, if you have, like, if you're in the product hive or something and you have people on, I don't remember any of those conversations I've ever had on product hive. Like some of them I may have blocked out, but some (laughs) of them I don't, some I don't remember. And so, but if I've had, if, you know, if you go out to lunch or you have, you know, you go meet somewhere and, and talk about and something or you grab breakfast or they come over to your office right. and they shadow you or like those experiences, I think, are really valuable yep. um, to to both parties. Um, and I think those are the experiences that you remember. Those are the ones that at least, you know, you you'd put in a journal or write down. Right. Yep. You're not going to be like the Slack stuff, the Twitter stuff, all that stuff. You're not going to really probably have that, even though it's kind of documented. Yep. Um, but. Yeah, I I feel like you remember more of the experiences and the mentors that I've had and the people that I feel like I'm kind of mentoring now or have asked me for help. Um, I want to get more involved with them. And so it's like I want to spend a little bit more time with them and, and kind of experience things with them a little bit. Like see, we'll see what they're working on. Have them come into Canopy and shadow our designers. Right. And see how we do critiques and all like all that stuff. Right. Because I feel like they get to see how it happens in real life. Like they get to see how it happens in reality Mm -hmm. and they get to see how dirty it is sometimes and Mm -hmm. not, not as clean as it was. Right. You know, when they're, when they're like at Lambda and they're learning stuff, it's like, it's not that clean. It doesn't work that way. Like people actually get their feelings hurt during critique (laughs) and you can see it happen in real time. And they'll remember that the same way we'll remember them contributing oddly to our critique while they were there shadowing, you know? So, I think those are important things to. I think those are important things to have is is, is have more of those. For lack of a better term, like a shared experience with some of these people. Yeah, you know, building something. I mean, yeah. just something, something to log away. Yeah, or even working with them. I've in the past, I've had people. Uh, you know, I've sent them like a, I've sent them like a screenshot of what I'm working on. I'm like, hey, I don't know what to do here. Like, I'm kind of lost here, and then they they would tweak it. You know, they take it, they add their own little spin on it, and be like, well, what about this? Like those are things that you'll remember more and those mm-hmm. are things that'll stick with you more and mm-hmm. probably the things that you'll learn more from on, on both parties. Yeah, that's right? cool. So let me ask you this, because you were telling me that at Canopy you ha- you provide opportunities for your team to mentor other people, right? Yeah, we try. What what value do you find in allowing those you those mentorship opportunities in the development of that individual, the one who's mentoring? Yeah, the one who's mentoring. So um I think when you teach somebody something else, you know, there's the old adage that those people who teach don't know how to do it or whatever it is. I I get that crap all the time, but like, um, I think you, I think you do. I think there's a, I think there's a real learning moment for you or at least a refreshing moment for you. Let's say you've been doing this three or four years and then somebody else comes up to you and asks you how to even do something in sketch or Figma or something like something you do all the time. You have to remember how you do it to explain it to somebody else. And I think that, that's a huge value because that's a refresher. That's a reminder to you. Like, this is how you do things. This is how you uh, do other stuff. And sometimes that can like come, you're like, you realize that you don't do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Somebody will come up to you and be like, Hey, I have this problem or whatever. And you're like, well, in the past I've done this and 
I don't really do that anymore, do I? And you have to go back through your process and be like, right. why don't I do that? Right. Why, why don't I wireframe anything anymore? Like, right. why don't I do this stuff anymore? And then it, it's a good check for you, <laughs> right? Like we had we had um, a designer at Canopy. Uh, she's no longer at Canopy. Uh, I'm still sad about this. Maybe if I start crying. Can I cry on your podcast? I can try and like After Effects. <laughs> Just put it like a little yeah. teardrop coming out of my... <laughs> Um, she, she picked up a couple of mentors. She voluntarily picked up a couple of mentors from like dev mountain students. Cause the dev mountain students reached out. To, I went and did some, like, uh, spoke with them in one of their classes. Yeah. And then I told them like how important it is for them to find a mentor. Yeah. And then they all hit me up with like, help me find a mentor. Can and I, I'm like, yeah. Oh crap. I just <laughs> opened a can of worms. Uh, and then I reached out to my team and said, who wants to have a mentor? And she was like, you know, she had only doing it a couple of years. And she was like, I don't know if I should do this. And I'm like, yeah, I think you should. Like, I think you're smart enough. You could do it. And uh, she mentored a few people. And, you know, I think she really grew as, you know, as a designer herself, she grew from mentoring those people because she was having to, like, go through their resume and critique their resume and go through their portfolio and help them build portfolios and, mm -hmm. like, all that kind of stuff. She was having to kind of go through her process again and try to figure out like what am i what advice am i giving them that's actually going to be beneficial to them right and what's not and do i do that or, or what what do i do that i didn't do back then like i think that's that's a good growing moment for you to just a, a, at least a at least a moment of self-reflection that you can have with your own self and yeah. be like i need to be better yep because i'm not even doing the things that i'm telling this mentor to do right so. yeah it's funny that you shared that i kind of laughed because you said uh you recognize some of the things that you've stopped doing yourself. Yeah. And once you understand the value of it, you're going, wait, why did I stop? And I don't think it's necessarily, I don't think anyone ever stops doing the right things on purpose. I think they just kind of get in the routine and, yeah. oh yeah, I did used to do that. Interesting. <laughs> I remember, oh, I really liked doing that. Why? Well, I wonder why I stopped. I have felt that same thing since teaching Lambda again, as I started yeah. talking about like these different pieces to, you know, discovery techniques or, you know, research techniques. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've, it's been, here's an example. It's been so long since I've wireframed because we've got such <laughs> strong design library systems that it's easy enough for me to drop in the actual component as it is for me to wireframe something. Yeah. And so I haven't wireframed in a long time. Uh, but just this week I started doing it again because I was like, there is value in it. And the value is what I've been teaching to the students. Yeah. Like, let's strip color out. Let's strip the actual verbiage out because we don't want to get hung up there. Let's look at flow. Because the wireframes kind of take us through this flow, and sure enough, I'm going, oh, yeah, there was value in that. I don't know why I ever stopped doing that. You're like, I got lazy. Stop Maybe, right? You know? And well, I think part of it, too, is you go through and you've done this stuff before, so you, you feel like you know, right? Yeah. Like, the more experience you have, you start to see things, and you start to, your pattern recognition becomes a lot better. And so then you don't have to, you, you feel like, I say you don't have to, you feel like you don't have to go through that process. But you should like you should go through the process of wireframing and going through thumbnails and right. and doing all that stuff. I was teaching uh, the other day. I was teaching about like uh, value prop design to the uh -huh. students at Dev Mountain, and I was like having them look through an interview and then write down the value prop. You know, the users' pain gains and yep. you know their wants and all that stuff and their jobs and everything, and trying to have them discover that. And I'm like, I'm walking around talking to them, and I'm like, I haven't done this in a <laughs> long time. Like I just we just had a user, a user interview the other day. Did I do this when I went back to my desk? Uh -huh. Did I synthesize the information? Uh -huh. I didn't. And that's probably, you know, that's bad. That's obviously not necessarily a good thing, but you do. Like you said, I think you just kind of, you, you develop your own little quirky process. Right. And I think having somebody else, that's why I like working with junior designers because they come out of nowhere. Like they'll come out of nowhere with some like really asinine idea. Well, what if you did this? And you're like, Dude, that's so, wait, that's interesting. Let me think about that for a second, <laughs> because you you kind of discount that that sort of naive part oh, of yeah. you that you used to you used to have. Now that you're like jaded and you're like you're old and crusty, like as senior designers, you know, got wear on them. Oh, you yeah. know, versus like a brand new designer coming in, they're like just happy about everything and want to like change the world. And you're like, we're not changing the world, man. You know, you're like <laughs> you're like all jaded about it, and they come in, and I think that. I think even having like being a mentor to somebody uh -huh. uh, that's like that just inspires you to do better work just sure. in general. Sure. Just just their energy level inspires you. Yep. That's why I think like uh, it's good to have these balanced teams. I've worked on teams where there's lots of senior designers on the team. And I feel like on one hand, like I had this conversation with one of another designer once 
you want to work with other people that you know are really talented mm-hmm. because you feel like they'll teach you something. Right. But if if they're not willing to teach you something, you can't yeah, just yeah, learn yeah. by observation. Right. So well, uh, think- it's almost better to flip it around and then and surround yourself with people that are different. I mean, different's always better, but like um, even some people that have different that that aren't as senior as you. Yeah. So you can get that energy, you can feed yeah. off of them. Yeah. No, I think I was gonna say I think you can still learn from them, even if they're not wanting to teach you. You kind of learn via osmosis, right? Yeah. But it takes a lot longer, and you might be learning some things you unintentionally, you know, probably shouldn't be learning. Yeah, you right? can pick up some bad habits. You, you could. So I think you're, there's. <laughs> still, I mean, it's kind of like my kids. If, even if I say like, "Well, I'm not teaching my kids that." Well, yeah, but they watched you do this long enough that they've picked it up. And, yeah. you know, so I do think it could still happen. So I think you've got to be intentional with your teaching mm-hmm. that you're trying to share with, you know, whether uh, the mentee or whoever it is. But yeah. recognizing as a mentor that this is a two way relationship and there's going to be things that you're going to pick up along the way and your willingness to self assess and <laughs> course correct, I do think is going to make for a better mentor in the end, right? Yeah. Hopefully, at yeah. least. Yeah, hopefully. And I think most, I think, I mean, I think hopefully most senior level designers, principal designers have somebody they're mentoring. Cause I feel like if you're not, you're missing out on a huge challenge in your career yeah. and a huge way to, I think it's also another way for people to grow. Cause a lot of designers don't want to go into management or anything like that. They have no desire to do so. So I think going that kind of the mentor route and looking for opportunities to help others out. Um, you know, kind of lift up others, mm-hmm. I think is, is a huge, uh, challenge that kind of gets you away from, you know, sitting in Figma all day yep. doing UI, you know, yep. like I'm going to go help this other person out with their issues and, and see if I can make them a better designer. Right. And that, I think that's like a huge, a huge way that any designer can grow. Yep. And they don't have to go into like management, you know, or yeah. Cause that track isn't like for everyone. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I would hate to burst this bubble. We are already at time. I don't know we're where time. I don't know where the time went, <laughs> but <laughs> we've now hit. Uh, we've gone past the time we thought we would. Uh, before we wrap, though, let's plug Design Much one more time. Tell me a little bit, or those who are listening, tell them a little bit about it. Yeah, Design Much. So me and Andy Page it was Andy's idea. Uh, he's got the sultry voice. If okay. you've listened to it, he's the one that's got the super sultry voice. Uh, love hearing his voice. That's why I do it. I, I always edit me out so I can just hear him. <laughs> the funny thing is, I wonder what other people are going to do on this one because there's no sultry voice going on right yeah, now. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm way more muppety than you for sure. But uh, yeah, but you can go to. Uh, we just we we've been doing just kind of a thing at like a topical based thing. Yeah. So if you guys have any topics, like last week we tackled the the topic of 80s automobile design influence on modern web design, which I know you thought wasn't an actual topic. But we turned it into a topic somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, shoot us a topic. We're we're just at designmuch.org, um, so you can contact us there. Uh, you can you can tweet us, uh, LinkedIn, all that stuff. Um, and then we just we try to publish about once a week. We're not as diligent as you are um, yeah, you about are. having having it planned. We miss we miss a few weeks. No, you guys have been doing great. We miss a few weeks here and there. But uh, yeah, it's been fun. We just we usually just have fun. It's not well, too crazy. And let, let me just throw this out because it's one of the things that I appreciate about your podcast. You can tell that you and Andy have a good relationship, and it's very light and while still being <laughs> informative. Like you you guys laugh a lot, and I yeah, think that it's an easy it's an easy listen while still being informed. So. Uh, yeah, check out Design Much podcast, and you've got all the deets, and I'll throw some of those contact yeah. uh, details in the description as well. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Patrick, for joining us. Thanks for having me on, man. It's in the studio. In I'm the excited. studio. I appreciate it, man. That's a wrap <laughs> for Design Today. See you yep. again next week.